Here we go. When you're drinking, when you're drinking, the show looks good to you. When you're drinking, ooh, you get stinking. It helps your point of view. Cause when you're sober, ooh, skies are all gray. When you're sober, life's a pain in the So keep drinking, that's what I'm thinking. Cause it's what I, I like to do. Boy, that bring back, uh, brings back some memories of Ricky sure Martin. Does. I can't believe he's gone. You see him there, so much energy. Of course, that was at the uh, uh, roast of Mike Robitaille, who was uh, with the Sabres and a Sabres broadcaster. And What a fantastic evening that was. Yeah. It was so memorable. And one of the people that made it so memorable, of course, was Ricky, but, but his band did amazing. as well. Amazing band, amazing people. And we are so happy to have well-known L.A. and... and a nation music scene on the national music scene, excuse me, and performs repeatedly. In, he, this yes. guy's in demand. He's in yes. session. He's in bands. He's been all many over the bands. Place. He's yeah. been in things like Santana, Billy Preston, Brothers Johnson. Played with Linda Ronstadt, Jimmy Seville. Hi, Jimmy. How you doing? How you doing, Pete and Rita? It's a pleasure to be here with you. Now, uh, you of course remember some of that footage back when we uh, you were there when we were playing in Niagara Falls, New York, at the casino for uh, Mike Robitaille. We had a great time. You know, every member in our band just, you know, raved about what a fun time it was. Now, when you see him there playing, um, what do you think? Well, it's still hard to believe that Ricky's gone. You know, like I told you before, you know, I spent about 10 years with him on the road, you know, and we became really good friends. You know, we, we call each other, you know, and chat every once in a while, send texts just to see how everybody was doing and that kind of thing. So we became pretty close. So how did you hook up with Ricky originally? Well, originally, uh, Ricky had the idea, you know, from his book, you know, that's Amore. And people were telling, you know, you should put some kind of show together about this. So he started thinking about it, and he did. So then he contacted his old dear friend, Wayne Tweed, who, was a, who had been bass player for 20 years with uh, Smokey Robinson. And so then, you know, and he then he contacted Billy Hinchy, who had been, you know, with the Beach Boys for X amount of years also. And so, you know, they were old friends of his since junior high school, you know, so they've, they've known each other forever. So they, they were the catalyst to put the, the show together. And then they decided to bring in Bobby Figueroa, who was, the, you know, what, had toured with the Beach Boys for about 25 years as drummer and vocalist and percussionist. And so then... Uh, they were they were at the uh, Riviera, I believe, for a few months, and then uh, Ricky was thinking about it. Be nice, maybe we bring in another keyboardist that could do all the strings and horns and you know and all that kind of stuff, because it was just Billy just playing piano at the time, and so then uh, Bobby, you know, ran into Bobby Zarati. We call him Bobby Z. And we call him C for affectionately, you know. <laughs> and so, and so then uh, they brought him in, you know, and they instantly loved him because he's a phenomenal musician. You know, Bobby's another one that's just a great, you know, keyboardist musician all around. And what amazes me is, you know, I've had musical training, but he hasn't had any musical training, and he could play anything, you know. Yeah, cool. What was uh, I mean? He Ricky was was a guy who was in charge, a happy guy. And he was in charge of the band. What was he like to work with? Ricky was one of the best bosses I've ever had, you know, because he didn't really treat us like a boss. He treated us like a friend. You know, when we, you know, when we went out, you know, it was just like just all the boys hanging out. It wasn't, you know, I've been in situations, you know, where there's the star and there's the band, you know, and, and you have to talk either to the musical director or, you know, whoever the, the PA is to get, you know, messages to convey to the artist. And I was Ricky, but Ricky was always, you know, we were always one of the boys when we were all together in a car, cracking jokes, and, you know, just typical Ricky, you know. So off stage, he was the same as on stage or behind the stage? Like, was he the same way to you guys? Very much so. Ricky did not put down airs, you know, just like Dean, you know, you know from everything I've heard about, Dean was like that, you know, he did not put on airs, just they were who they were, you know. Any uh, great stories you could share with us, funny stories? 
Well, for one thing, <laughs> Ricky started calling me Jim Bobwe. <laughs> <laughs> And so that was his pet name for me, and it stuck. Right? <laughs> what do you think, Zimbabwe? Well, Rick, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> So he was so full of life, as you're clearly stating. Um, was he ever serious? Yeah, there were times where he was serious, and I mean, you know, and, you know, if he was going to, you know, just, like we all do, you know, just some private, you know, uh, situations, you know, and things like that, you know, family, you know, kind of thing. You know, or, you know, business related, you know, trying to get contracts happening and things like that. You know, on the business end, he was very serious, you know, as far as making sure that the bookings were happening and our, you know, our accommodations were taken care of, our transportation was taken care of, our flights and so forth, you know. You know, he was working on a big project, which we're not going to tell anybody about. And it was really unfortunate that, you know, he passed when he did. And, and you knew about it, Jimmy. Uh, it was something that we were going to do, all of us were involved in, yeah. we were going to do in Vegas, and uh, you guys would have been a part of it, and it's just so unfortunate uh, that it named, never came to fruition, because that would have blown people away. Yeah, we were totally looking forward to that, you know, and, and Ricky and I had discussed that, you know, he was really, really looking forward to it, you know, so that's why it saddens me that we didn't get to do it, you know. How would you, uh, how would you sum up Ricky's life in a couple sentences? I would just say jubilant. You know, he, that's the way Ricky was. He was just, you know, very bubbly, you know. He had a serious side like everybody else does, you know, but most of the time he was just a fun guy to be hanging with, you know. But like I said, he, he was great at tarpon, or, you, know, uh, you know, putting in the different compartments and, and, you know, making sure that business was business, you know, and then, you know, friendship was friendship. You know, when it was business, we had to take care of business, you know. And that's why our, our, our organization ran like a well-oiled machine. Well, we're so sorry for your loss, Jimmy. We really are. And thanks for taking the time to be with us. And God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. I've been very fortunate and thankful. Yeah. <laughs> and when we return on this special edition of the Pete Reed Show. A tribute to Ricky Martin. We're talking to his best friend in 51 years. Welcome back to this special edition, a tribute to our good friend, Ricky Martin. And you know what, we're going to talk to his best friend now. Wayne Tweed is, is on the line from California and uh, 51 years, best friend to Ricky Martin. And so, I mean, what was it like being best friends with Ricky? Uh, well, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the reason we got along so well is we liked the same things. We liked trucks, motorcycles. Guns and explosives. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. In that order? <laughs> in that order, yeah. The uh, guns and, and so, explosives, uh, you we might... We very compatible in that sense. The, the guns and explosives, you might have to uh, elaborate on that a little bit. Well, we left... My, my father had a ranch, and uh, we'd go up, and uh, we'd bring hundreds and hundreds of rounds of ammunition, and we'd shoot all different kinds of weapons. And... Uh, the explosive end of things, we made our own bombs, and we used to blow them up. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I look at Ricky. And <laughs> you wouldn't time, expect that. Couldn't imagine him making bombs, but hey, what are you gonna do? Oh yeah, yeah. He was the he was he was the worst. Uh, <laughs> 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 and his brother, of course, you know, uh, collected weapons, a lot of uh, machine guns and stuff like that. So Dean Paul, we, we were always around that stuff. We were we were lucky to still have limbs. <laughs> Now, whereabouts did you guys grow up together? Well, I grew up in View Park, but we went to the same school in Beverly Hills. Ricky went to, lived in Beverly Hills, and uh, that's where we met, at a school called Rexford. So you guys were basically the brat pack, right, in Beverly Hills? Uh, I, you know, <laughs> they were. I was, I was the kid, uh, you know, my dad was a psychiatrist, so uh, oh. I, I was a little different than those guys. Did your dad like you hanging out with, you know, the musicians and people like that? Did he like that? Dad was okay with that. He, uh, he didn't uh, really speak about, about that, but, uh, uh, he, he, you know, he, he was okay with that. He was, and he loved Ricky. Ricky would just come and spend the night, and Dad would get six waffles in the morning, and, 
they, they, they were pretty close. They, were, they, they really loved him. So. so I understand you were over at the house a lot. He stayed over at your house on weekends and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I was always at the house, and because uh, uh, there was always something going on, you know, either we were shooting a film or we were doing something, doing some welding and fixing stuff, and <laughs> and building mini bikes and and bombs and you know. <laughs> gotta have bombs. <laughs> yeah, and it was it, it was it was funny to sit down and have dinner with the Martins uh, because I was always taught to uh, you know to clear my own table and clear my space and. and uh, you know, they had people that did that, and, and so they found it weird me getting up and taking my plate over. <laughs> you know. I guess so. <laughs> they, they were amused by that. You know? <laughs> now, was was Dean a nice guy? Dean he, was great. He was he was great. I remember uh, being invited on a trip with them to uh, to go up and down the coast on uh, the Wild Goose, which was uh, John Wayne's yacht. Yep. And uh, we went up and down the thing, and uh, up and down the coast of California. And, and they would take me, I mean, they would invite me to a lot of things. He used to take us to Vegas and to see his show. And, uh, and he'd always take care of everything. He was, he was a wonderful, wonderful man. So what was one of your most favorite moments with Ricky that you can remember growing up? Um, Making bombs. <laughs> I remember uh, there's so many things we did. Uh, I think the, the most significant part of our life was uh, when we both got into music and we started to record and we built our own studio and then we built another studio and then he got signed by a major label and then we recorded with some of the great musicians and I happened to be one of the guys that played on all of, the, all of Ricky's records. And uh, so... I'm real thrilled with that, and I have those wonderful memories. Uh, and and I, you know, from time to time, I'll I'll kick on one of his records. And uh, uh, if you get a chance, listen to Streets of Love or Stop Look Around. And uh, I had the great pr privilege and pleasure of playing on those records, and uh, that was a good time for us. Now I've known Ricky for about ten years, and okay. always a great guy. Always yeah. ready to help people. He was a giving guy. Yeah. Uh, he treated his band members like his own family, which I, you know, I've been around a lot of entertainers, and and I hadn't seen anybody do what he did with his with his uh, with his band and the people that helped him out. He was just amazing. Was he like that when he was young? Yeah, he was. He shared everything. I mean, it was it was. I mean, they had everything. I mean, you know, <laughs> they had they had everything. I found a, a weasel in a garage. Uh, and I told Dean Paul about it, and he went down and bought it. So we rented a truck, and a weasel was like a tank without a turret. And it, it you know, so you know, they shared everything. You know, we, we it was just a, it was it was amazing times. So now you got together with him, and uh, you guys put the uh, the show together, which was uh, yes. the show with with him and remembering his father, right? Yes. And then you guys traveled for 10 years at least on that show, right? Yeah, we started at the Riviera in Las Vegas and, uh, you know, kind of honed the show. We worked out all the little kinks in it. And, uh, and then we uh, took it on the road. And he was successful. He was successful for quite a while. I came out of retirement, actually, to do it because I had been on the road for so long that, uh, that uh, you know, I was, I was, I was done. And uh, so, but I, he said, Wayne, can you do this one for me? And I said, yeah, okay, all right. So we decided to do it and uh, had a lot of fun doing it. Did a lot of shows, met a lot of folks. Loved Canada, by the way. It was there a lot. Well, yeah. thank, well, thank you so you. much. <laughs> yeah, he loved Canada. Canada. I was there a lot with Smokey Robinson, too, so that was really? fun. Yeah, that's right. You played bass with Smokey, right? Yes, for 13 years. Wow. So Ricky's gone now. Um, really, really, yeah, he's, it's so hard for us to believe. I, I, my wife and I were just talking about it the other day and going, you know, I cannot believe a guy with that kind of energy. And I mean, you never knew he was 62 going on 63. He was 62 when he passed yeah. away, almost Didn't 63. Didn't seem like it. Um, did, yes, I know. It, it, it took us all by, by shock, but he was, he was struggling towards the end there. Yeah, I understood his health. He was having health problems. Yeah, 
and uh, you know, and his, his daughters had moved out, and and, uh, and so it was tough for him. He was living alone, and uh, it was kind of rough for him. So sum up uh, Ricky for us in just a, in a few words. Um, Ricky, uh, funniest guy I ever knew, the sweetest guy, had a great heart. Uh, he was talented. He was he was he was a very gifted guy, and uh, he was easy to love. And and so I loved him dearly, and I will really miss him. Well, we're with you on that, Wayne. Yeah. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And uh, well, you know, I just want to say to you guys, thank you for taking a moment to to uh, recognize him and pay a little tribute to him. Uh, I'm sure he's smiling down, <laughs> saying thanks, guys. And so, for me, I thank you guys for doing what you do. I appreciate it very much. No problem. Thank yeah. you. And a lot of people didn't know it, but uh, some of the shows that uh, that I did with Ricky were charity shows. And and you know what? I, I can tell it now. I wasn't allowed to tell it then. But uh, he paid for his own plane. The band yeah. got paid. Through he, him? Yeah, he did not get paid yeah. on several occasions. I mean, he was I was just, aware of that. Uh, I was aware of that. He, he did that routinely. Yeah. Not routinely, but he did it. There were times when he would do that. Yeah. And as long as he could afford it. And uh, most of the times he could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fortunate. Nice to be in that place. Wayne, yeah. great chat. Thank with you. you. Thank you so much, guys. God bless. God bless Same you as well. And when we come back, we talk to Ricky's fiance. Special edition tribute. Tribute to one of our very good friends, Ricky Martin. Of course, the uh, the son of Dean, the sixth in the family, uh, born to uh, his mom, who was a second wife, Jeannie, and uh, now a really special person who we both had the opportunity to meet. Um, special lady, and I can understand why Ricky fell in love with her, uh, and that was his fiance. And uh, Raquel Ducati is here. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you guys so much for having me here. It's just a great privilege. Thank you. We, we just want to let you know how sorry we are for your loss. And, and for us, he was a special man, and I'm sure he was very special to you as well. Oh, my gosh. He was the best man ever in my life, and, um, and I miss him dearly. I miss him dearly. So you guys have a great story. and I mean, it's a, it's a story over a decade, and it starts in a casino in Louisiana in 2005. Tell it's, us about it. It's a true love story, yeah, really. <laughs> It really is. It really is. Um, yes, at the Delta Casino in Lake Charles, Louisiana, uh, Ricky was doing one of his shows. And so my family and some of my friends, we all got together to go see his show. And, uh, and so we're there enjoying, you know, there's like 15 of us sitting at, at, a, t at a table enjoying the show. And, um, and then my friend says, oh, Raquel, the song, he's beginning to sing the song Houston. And being from Houston, of course, she said, let's go dance to this. And I said, okay, wonderful. I love to dance. And you guys, I don't know, you know, you remember the song Houston. But yeah. slow. It's real slow. <laughs> really slow. <laughs> it's the slowest song ever. And so it was quite funny. It was quite comical. So we go to the dance floor and it's this tiny dance floor. And all I'm thinking is, oh, my goodness, like, is this over yet? <laughs> and then that was the moment, though. It gave Ricky and I a moment where we made eye contact, and, um, and I saw those blue eyes of his and just this handsome man in front of me. And I thought, oh, my goodness, who is this? <laughs> so um, after that moment, we, of course, returned to the table, and we were asked, um, to go to the meet and greet in the VIP room there at the casino. So, of course, we would we agreed. And there's this long line of people, you know, um, at the meet and greet. And Ricky is signing, you know, doing his little autograph and, and giving sweet little, you know, hugs and things like that to the, to the fans. And so it's my turn, and I'm anticipating and nervous in this moment and not really sure what I was going to say. And well, let me ask you a question. Let me hold Let me ask you a question. Now, were you interested? So you're standing in this line going, I really want to meet this guy. I, I hope I get to go and date him. 
<laughs> well, I got to tell you, I mean, he had me at the blue eyes and that beautiful, like, everything that I saw when I was dancing to Houston, he had me there. So I just, yeah. He didn't have to say hello then. <laughs> no, he really didn't. And, and so little did I know, of course, this wonderful, beautiful man that he is inside and out. But at that moment, it is my turn to, to greet him. And so um, I say, great show. You know, he looks up at me with those gorgeous blue eyes and he's putting his autograph down and then he leans forward and that what was supposed to be a little peck turned into a lip locking, passionate no. y'all <laughs> kiss. And I'm telling you, it went on for three minutes at least oh, without wow. any interruption. I think you just heard oohs and ahs, and I'm sure my dad was mumbling under his breath. <laughs> Something, I'm sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> Actually, the security guards approached us and said, enough, you need to stop. So the security uh, there broke it up, and, um, and then Ricky so sweetly um, picked his eyes up because um, he was beginning to write on his picture again, and he said, are you single? And I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and he put his number, and we have just been the best of friends and companions and eventually to be engaged over 11 years. So, um, yes, just a beautiful, beautiful love story. Now, did you know he was a bomb maker? Did he ever tell you that? <laughs> he did tell me the story of the bombs. I think that was back in those... Yeah, those childhood years, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, let me tell you, let me share something with you. Did you know he was building and putting together a helicopter from scratch at right. his home? You know, no way! You know, you know what? He, yeah. he kept telling me he was doing this. He said, I'm not going to I'm not gonna tell you what it is. I'm going to show you what it is. And that's what it was. And that, I love helicopters, too. Oh, gosh, I'm telling y'all, it was amazing. So he would order piece by piece, you know, and I don't, this come from this company, and he had actually built it when I, the last I visited him, and it was put together, and it was just all the internal mechanisms is what he had left. So talk about, man, just, a, not just a beautiful man, but such an intelligent man. Not just musical as we think of him, but also technically, he's obviously brilliant too. Now we, we got yeah we got to meet you in April of 2015. Of course, I, other than the picture, we already knew you because that's all he ever talked about. And he yeah. he was just he just couldn't wait to introduce you. And of course, you guys live apart in different uh, parts of the United yes. States. So it was yes. it, just to see you. He was all excited, but he was like, yeah, "You got to meet you. Yeah, she's, yeah. The best. Oh, yeah. she's the best. She's the best." And then uh, we knew that he was going to ask you uh, to marry him. And then uh, in May, it happened, right? It did, absolutely. In fact, you know, we reunited, it was in April, um, at the roast in 2015. We hadn't seen each other in, in a while, and we thought, well, let's get together. And our both of our youngest kids, they were the same age, and they graduated high school. And, you know, our kids, both of us, were our everything. And so we thought, this is our time now. So maybe... You know, we've loved each other. We've been wonderful friends for 11 years, and it's our time. So, yes, then we got engaged. So I'd like to think Pete and Reed had a little to do with that then. Yeah. <laughs> We're taking credit. <laughs> now, I'm definitely giving credit where credit's due. <laughs> and you guys were supposed to get married in the fall, and then, of course, uh, Ricky's mom got sick, and he was back and forth there, and there was, you had to postpone the wedding. Yes, this is true. Um, you know, we were planning the wedding, and in fact, we were going to, we got accepted to do um, Say Yes for the Dress. Oh, uh, we, wow. We were going to do that, and then we realized, you know, there were so many other things going on that were occupying and bringing stress to our lives, and, and his mother was definitely, um, had, had taken a, a turn for the worst with, with her different things she was suffering from. And so we decided, you know what, we want this to be beautiful and, um, and, and more peaceful. Let's just get through these difficult times. And so we had postponed the wedding. We did. Now his mom is, go ahead. His mom has passed away after Ricky actually, but she yeah. was, uh, she was a big fan of you guys getting married and right away, right? She was, and that's exactly what I was going to say. She 
wanted us to get married and and the sooner the better you know she uh you know ricky told her mom we, we want to get married in the church you know and and she said well why let's just do this you know she just really was ready for us to do it she was very supportive and very very encouraging that's so nice now january of this year um ricky started to have health issues yes he did he he did um gosh he spent so many times so many visits in and out of the hospitals um you know, just trying to get to the root of what was going on for him. I mean, it was different issues from pneumonia um, to just the doctors trying to figure out um, how to get him well, you know, how to physically just be able to, to get him better. Um, but, you know, every time I spoke with him, he was just so positive. He was so loving. He was so encouraging and planning for our wedding. So um, that was just ongoing in the conversation just you know we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna get well we're gonna we're gonna get together we're gonna do this and our plan was in September of um, 2016 you know the plan was to reunite and begin planning this wedding again so unfortunately you know that didn't we didn't get to see that day now you weren't with him when when he passed away you found out after no. the fact Right. Correct. Correct. I was not with him at the time, you know, and I have stayed in touch somewhat with his girls, just checking in with them. You know, he adored his girls. He loved them so much. They were his pride and joy. And um, and it was a pleasure just to get to know them, too. We had a wonderful time together and they met my children. And Ricky was just a wonderful father, wonderful man wonderful performer, wonderful father, so much we can say about him. Yeah, you know, the thing with him, too, is that he, the kids came first. It wasn't the career, and I know, because there was different things that we were supposed to do over in Europe and Italy and stuff like that, and then he goes, I, I can't right now because uh, I got to make sure my daughters are okay and they're in school and they're doing this and this and this, so family came first. You know, that was important to him. That is it. Yes, very much so. It did. And, you know, and what's so beautiful, too, about Ricky is he treated the fans just like so wonderfully. I mean, when at his shows, when we were when I was there with him, he just gave them 110 percent of his time and attention and affection and love and sharing stories about his father. Um, so just a good man all the way around. Just, yeah, just a beautiful soul, a beautiful soul. Well, we would like to thank you so much for coming on and talking with us about this. And, uh, you know, we feel the same way about him. And, you know, God bless you. And I hope God helps you through this rough time. Thank you so God much. You. I appreciate y'all so much. This has been wonderful. And, and God bless y'all too. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, for those of you out there watching the show, Listen, you never know uh, when somebody's not going to be here in the next moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, hug them, love them, tell them you love every them. Every day. Yeah, every single day. Uh, it's Amen. been a, yeah, <laughs> thank you. You know what? It's been a pleasure to talk about our friend, here we go. Ricky Martin. When and, you're uh, drinking. God rest your soul, Ricky. When and you're have drinking. A good week. We'll see you next time on the Pete and Reed Show. The show looks good to you. When you're drinking. Ooh, you get stinking. It helps your point of view. for coming out this evening. Uh, it, what a bless, I swear. Mr. Ricky Martin. Rita. And Miss Rita. Thank you. Perry. My band, the other fellows.